now Peter Kieran, who is the managing director, or sorry, the president and CEO of CPCS. Peter. Thank you very much, uh, Patricia. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, electricity in, uh, in Africa today. First, I'll give a very brief uh, introduction of CPCS. Um, we're a, a transaction advisory uh, company originally started by Canadian Pacific uh, Railways. Um, uh, for the past uh, 20 years, we've been an independent company and expanded beyond railways into ports and, and power uh, and other areas of, of uh, infrastructure. Um, we've worked in more than 115 uh, countries, uh, and right now we have 13 offices uh, overseas, uh, in, including uh, about eight in, in Africa. Um, some of the projects that we're involved with, with private investment in infrastructure, we're working in, in Iraq to develop a framework for private investment in, in distribution. Uh, in Kenya, we're helping to develop a, a power market. Um, those of you who are not involved in the electricity business, the, the, the buying and selling of power uh, in, in, in markets like Canada and the U.S. is, is, a, is a very complicated um, mix of short and long-term contracts. Uh, so there are spot contracts and spot auctions every 30 minutes to, uh, to buy up uh, a power, and we're trying to establish a similar system in, uh, in, in Kenya. In Nigeria, we're the lead uh, transaction advisor to the government for the privatization of the generation and distribution company uh, of Nigeria, the successor companies. Uh, that uh, has been going for a number of years and, uh, and is very close to the finish line with only two of the uh, 17 companies remaining to be taken over by the, uh, by the, by the private sector. We're also the lead uh, transaction advisor to the, to, the, uh, to the government for the sale of 10 brand new uh, power plants, uh, gas-fired power plants in, in Nigeria that generate uh, a considerable amount of power. And our, our client for that is our next uh, speaker that uh, I'm looking forward to hear very much, uh, Mr. Mr. Olutu. Um, we're also starting work in, uh, in Zambia as the transaction advisor to the government of Zambia to, uh, to develop a 750 megawatt hydro project uh, called the Lower Kafway. Uh, hydro dam. Um, I, I want to just put up a couple of slides that uh, sort of paint a picture. And uh, Nagatu showed one of the slides, which was the sort of uh, light, but I'll, I'll come at it with a slightly different uh, perspective. This is just a, a slide of the generation capacity versus, uh, versus population. So you get uh, looking at total population, you can see the large, uh, large countries and, and total total electricity generation. All of, the, all of the developed countries, if you like, are above that, uh, that, that line. And uh, South Africa is the only country in Africa that, that comes close. A country like, like Nigeria, you can see uh, a very large population, but an extremely low output uh, of, of electricity. Now, what, is that, why does that, uh, what does that matter? Um, What's, what's the connection, and, and as you heard uh, you know, yesterday, the World Bank and many others are really coming to believe that electricity is an extremely important part of, of development. So this, this slide looks at the electricity consumption, kilowatt hours per person per year, and compares that to the, uh, to the social uh, well-being index that the uh, UN calculates for every every country in, in the world. So if you look up at the up at the top, you'll see Norway, Canada, the U.S., Australia. So these are companies that are ranked very close to one. It's a scale uh, of one, with one sort of being the maximum. Very close to one on the on the social uh, index. Those countries all have. Uh, electricity consumption. I mean, the you know Canada and Norway, of course, being northern countries, have very high, uh, very high consumption per person. Um, but basically, there appears to be a line of about 2,500 kilowatt hours per person. So countries above that, uh, countries like uh, like uh, you know Poland, um, 
uh, who have fairly low consumption by Canadian standards, but nevertheless are very high uh, and reaching the, uh, the level of, of the fully developed uh, countries in terms of, of the, the, the life that they offer to their, uh, to their inhabitants. On the, on, the, on the left of that, that 2,500 line, um, th there's just a few countries that are mentioned, but you can see many, many of the, of the countries in Africa. In fact, all of the countries in Africa, with the exception of South Africa, fall into that uh, category. So Zambia, Pakistan, uh, India, uh, these are countries that have uh, insufficient power. Now, it's not, um, so th this shows the relationship between social well-being uh, and, and electricity consumption. It doesn't necessarily follow that if you go into a poor country and create electricity, everything else will be taken care of. Obviously, it's not uh, a direct causal relationship one-to-one, -one, but there's a very strong uh, linkage and you can see that, that without, without electricity, it's impossible to reach uh, high levels uh, of, of economic uh, well-being. Keep that, uh, keep that uh, figure of 2,500 in mind uh, as we go forward and look at a few other uh, slides right now. So this, this is, uh, this is a, a, a map of, of Africa showing the power consumption per capita by country. So, and the, and the doesn't conform exactly, but the, the yellow is above 2,000. So that's uh, countries that are above 2,000. So that equates fairly well to our line of uh, 2,500 that we're talking about. So only Libya and South Africa uh, are in, in, that, in that category. Uh, and unfortunately, Libya is having severe problems right now, and, 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 uh, and their, their power production is, is, is dropping uh, quite significantly. Um, and, and, and South Africa, when you think about it, they're really just at the, at the margin. They, they don't have sufficient power uh, for, to meet the demands. They're having uh, brownouts and, and, and scheduling. Uh, this famous uh, word that most Canadians don't know it, what it really means, but uh, everyone from Africa is familiar with load shedding. And uh, load shedding is a very nice way of saying, sorry, we're turning off your power for the next six hours or perhaps the next three days. Um, in a place like Uganda, they advertise in the newspaper so you can look up your region and you can see that, okay, next Saturday we'll be without power and then next Tuesday and so on. And uh, they rotate it around and try to sp spread the, the pain of not having uh, electricity. Below that, we start to get into, there's a couple of countries in North Africa and then, uh, and then countries uh, in the south who have uh, in that range of 1,000. Uh, and then we get into the countries that, that really um, are shown in here as, as, as brown and black that have less than 250 um, kilowatt hours per person um, per year. Um, I'm going to bring up the next slide, which is, which is the same uh, slide, although only showing Africa, uh, that Nagatu showed us this morning. And this is basically, this is the nighttime uh, look um, at, at Africa. You can immediately see the, uh, the cities. Anybody, can, you can go through. You can spot Mombasa and Dar es Salaam and Nairobi and Kampala and Lagos and Accra. Abidjan, all these uh, cities in South Africa that cluster around Johannesburg, cluster around, around Durban, uh, come out quite, quite strongly. Uh, and then they have the Nile, uh, the Nile uh, Valley, which is really the only area in, uh, in Africa that, that, that looks anything at all uh, like Europe and, and, uh, and North America, where you have major, major uh, urban, urban uh, and it doesn't have to be urban, but places with electricity where the, where the lights are on. So this is, this is really, this is, the, uh, this is the, the, the challenge. This is the situation today and, 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 the, uh, and the challenge when we get back and thinking of that connection with, uh, with, with develop. I don't want to pick on, uh, on Nigeria at all, but it gives a good example of, of a, very, a very large, the largest economy, uh, the largest population, the largest economy in, in Africa. Um, a leader in the continent in, in, in many ways, uh, but one that really through the, through the 70s especially, and then they've had a hard time recovering 
uh, let their electricity system and, uh, go, go down and, and fail to reinvest in, in electricity. So the generation capacity two or three years ago was only four gigawatts of, of power, and that's the capacity. Uh, average daily production was always less than that. Uh, and this was the same as the production in 1970 in spite of the huge growth of, of, of Nigeria. The power consumption in Nigeria uh, in, in 2013, according to the World Bank, was 140 kilowatt hours per capita. So again, 140 kilowatt hours per capita, the target to start being able to show uh, good living for people is 2,500. So they've got to increase that uh, by a factor of about 20 times to, uh, to reach, uh, reach their, their targets. Of course, there isn't enough electricity and, and people rely on, on private, uh, private uh, generators. Um, it did, the, the, the good thing about this is that it was so bad that the government of Nigeria and the population of Nigeria really has, has, has realized it's a huge deficiency. They're taking very uh, major steps, uh, including the privatization of the entire electricity system uh, and the encouragement of, of private uh, investment in, in generation. Uh, and the, the plan is to increase the capacity uh, by a factor of five uh, by 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 2020. Um, I'm going to go through now, just, uh, I won't be able to go through these in detail, but basically just going through in countries, this is, this realization is happening all over the continent. There's a very intense, uh, there are intense plans in almost every single country in Africa to increase uh, generation, transmission, distribution of electricity to reach uh, more people. Algeria uh, it has plans to triple its generation capacity with six new gas-fired plants under construction. Angola plans to invest $23 billion, uh, mainly in uh, several large-scale hydro uh, projects. Uh, they want to raise their capacity from 1.8 gigawatts up to 9 gigawatts. Uh, Botswana is, has a major coal-fired plant uh, under construction that will double their output. Uh, Cameroon is focused primarily on, on hydro projects uh, in, in the sort of medium uh, 200 megawatt uh, size, but also putting considerable amount of effort into, into small hydro, which has a very large uh, total capacity in, in Cameroon, and they expect to increase their uh, their production by a factor of three, up to three gigawatts. Cote d'Ivoire also focused mainly on uh, small and medium hydro, 66 projects in all, including some thermal power plants. Uh, very strong investment uh, by private investors. They plan to increase their output to 3.5 gigawatts. Uh, Chad is going for a solar strategy. They have no network at present, no, no distribution system of any kind or transmission system, so they're going for isolated uh, solar installations in 33 uh, towns. Uh, Congo, of course, if you're interested in hydro, Congo has the most exciting uh, developments. Uh, Inga 3, which uh, you know, may or may not happen, but uh, would produce 4.8 gigawatts. Um, and, uh, and if that's a success, then people will be looking to Grand Inga, uh, which would be the biggest hydro development in, in the world. Um, several times larger than the Three Gorges project in China and would generate 40 gigawatts uh, in, in total power, which is more than uh, all of sub-Saharan uh, Africa, um, if you exclude uh, South Africa. Um, Gabon has also uh, got plans. Uh, Egypt has major plans to increase its capacity to 30, 30 gigawatts. Um, by the way, I put uh, the little green check. I know part of the, the agenda today was to talk about renewables. So the, uh, the countries with the green check are countries that have a renew significant renewable component. Ethiopia, we've heard a lot about Ethiopia, and they have very ambitious uh, plans uh, that are underway, projects under construction. Large-scale hydro, the, uh, the largest in, in, in Africa at this time. They also have major geothermal and, and wind projects. Uh, their intent is to increase capacity to 10 gigawatts, and that will generate enough for, uh, for a surplus that they'll be able to export to Kenya, Sudan, and, and possibly even uh, across uh, in, into the Middle East. 
Uh, Ghana is working primarily on gas-fired plants, also some so large uh, concentrated solar um, with a target of five uh, gigawatts of, of production. Um, Kenya uh, is in a bit of trouble. They had relied primarily on hydro in the past, and with a, a long drought, the production of their hydro is, has dropped significantly. Uh, they've had to bring in emergency power. Uh, so they have wind, solar, uh, and geothermal uh, projects under construction uh, with, with assistance of private investors. Uh, and also, uh, they are expanding their uh, hydro capacity as well. Malawi uh, has relied on coal generation. Morocco, Morocco had a huge concentrated solar uh, plan that I guess has, has not going ahead now that was going to export uh, power to, uh, to Europe, uh, but instead uh, they're moving ahead with, with gas-fired uh, plants. Um, Mozambique, tremendous capacity uh, in hydro and also with their uh, gas, uh, gas reserves. Uh, so they've got plans to increase their capacity by five gigawatts. Uh, most, most of this construction is already committed and uh, Brazil uh, is a major uh, investor, Brazilian companies, major investors, Namibia, Niger, Nigeria. Uh, you'll hear a little bit more about uh, in detail, but they've uh, got uh, very ambitious plans uh, to expand uh, hydro, uh, as well as to continue with private investment in gas-fired plants. Uh, Senegal um, is not the only one, but uh, Senegal is, is moving ahead with plans to build a nuclear uh, reactor, uh, and they have a cold fire uh, plant under. Um, you can see, I, I, you know, I don't know if going through every one of these uh, makes sense, but uh, I think you get a sense that basically in all throughout Africa, there's a tremendous increase uh, in, in, in investment in, in electricity. Um, Tanzania also uh, mainly uh, relying on, on gas. Uh, Uganda uh, on its big hydro, they've got a lot of potential hydro dams on the, on the Nile and they're moving ahead. Uh, there, uh, Zambia, I mentioned we're starting to work uh, with them in the hydro area and they're also building a coal-fired plant. Um, Zimbabwe, also very active and also plans to, uh, to build a nuclear uh, reactor. They have a, um, is it chromium? I'm not sure. One of the, what are, they've made a, a deal with China to get a nuclear reactor in, in, uh, in return for, uh, for the rights to, uh, to export uh, some minerals from, from uh, from Zimbabwe. Um, not all, but uh, many, many of these investments involve the private sector. I think there's a realization across Africa that really the days of government held monopolies are, are, are over. Uh, infrastructure is, is certainly the responsibility uh, of government, but I emphasize that it's the responsibility of government to make it happen. It doesn't mean that government is the only one who can, who can do this and that they should take the full weight of, of investment. So private operators bring cash and they bring a, a tremendous amount of, of efficiency and, and market uh, awareness that also is extremely um, important. So what will this mean in terms of private, of, of, of power output? So this was the slide we looked at, um, at at the beginning a few minutes ago of each of the countries. If these plans, and, and I'm sure not all of the plans will happen, uh, but based on if these plans are achieved uh, over the next 20 years, then we'll see a change um, in, in the map. There'll still be some areas of, of darkness uh, for sure, but uh, the areas that will have reached that uh, 2000 uh, increase, so we expect to see about 10 countries uh, having reached that, that threshold, and, uh, and many other uh, countries, Angola, Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria, Zambia, Mozambique, uh, very close uh, behind and, and close to that, and other countries making some significant uh, moves um, as, as, uh, as well. So thank you very much for your uh, attention. Copies of the presentation for anyone who's interested are available on the, on the CPCS uh, website. Thank you.